Hello, uh, welcome everyone to another uh, exciting episode of the New York 4J online meetup. Uh, today we have something very special for you guys. Um, we have uh, Lou and Andrea here today, uh, and they were going to be talking about event driven graph analytics uh, using Neo 4J and Apache Car uh, Kafka. Um, so, this is an exciting topic. So, I am here with my colleague, Mark. Hello, everybody. And uh, Lou and Andrea, why don't you guys introduce yourselves first and then uh, we can get started? Hi, everybody. I'm Andres Anturbano. I work for uh, Laru's Business Automation, which is an Italian company. It's a Neo4j partner, the first Italian uh, Neo4j partner. And we uh, have a strong uh, presence into the Neo4j ecosystem. We are contributor uh, of uh, Epoch, uh, of the Neo4j ETL, of, uh, the, we are the creator of uh, the Neo4j GDBC of child driver. Uh, and we also created the Neo4j Streams plugin, which integrates Kafka with Neo4j. That's a cool one. Very interesting one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you make everything sound so fancy with your accent. <laughs> <laughs> like the ETL too. Uh, OK, Lou, go ahead. Tell everyone about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Lou Lazarevich, and I am one of the pre-sales guys working in the field team here in the EMEA team. OK. Uh, and I think we can get started. Um, Andrea, you're going to start us off? Sure. Oh, really quick. People have questions. You can ask live questions on the right-hand side in the chat room. If you're watching this not live and it's too late for you to ask live questions, um, we are going to post a link to the community thread in this chat in the chat window now, um, and you'll be able to just ask the presenters directly um, on the community Neo4j community site thread for the for this online meetup. Okay, I'm going to send hand it over to you, Andrea. Cool, thank you. So oh. let's talk about uh, oh, the loop. So let's talk about of uh, the new 4 streams plugin. So this is the agenda. We have uh, an introduction, an introduction uh, to Apache Kafka. Then uh, we will have uh, an overview of uh, the new 4 streams plugin. And then I will pass the, the end to, to you, which uh, we will talk about uh, having driven graph analytics. So uh, just to introduce you into the, the context, what is Apache Kafka? Uh, Apache Kafka basically is a, a messaging system. It's a, a distributed streaming platform that uh, has three main capabilities. It allows to publish and subscribe to stream of uh, records. It allows to store the stream of records in a fault tolerant and uh, durable way. Uh, they have something that call uh, uh, exactly once uh, delivery. So they are they're sure that a message can be delivered uh, uh, just once. And uh, uh, Kafka allows to process uh, stream of records uh, as they occur. So, but how it works, it's uh, focused uh, on two uh, uh, main uh, category. So uh, we have the topic, a topic each, uh, which is a category or a feed name where a record uh, uh, is published. Uh, think about uh, JMS uh, queue systems, uh, uh, RabbitMQ or uh, something similar. And then each topic can have one or more partitions. A partitions is an ordered sequence of records. Each record is identified by a, a, a unique ID called offset, which is a, a, a sequential. So it starts from zero to N. And uh, the, off the offset management is in charge to the consumer. So the publisher publishes the record over a partition, over a, a partition of a specific topic. And the consumer is able to read the partition of the topic as he wants. So he can start from uh, the beginning, from the end, or from a specific offset. 
uh, every topic in uh, Kafka is uh, uh, multi-consumer, uh, so can have uh, one or more consumers, which everyone is in charge to manage its own uh, offset. So, how it's used? It's generally used for building uh, two class of uh, applications, uh, real-time streaming uh, data pipelines. Think about uh, a real-time uh, ATL pipeline that uh, allowed you to build, uh, I don't know, a just-in-time data warehouse which react uh, in, uh, in real-time over uh, database changes. So your data warehouse uh, change with, uh, as the data change, as the flow uh, change. And uh, uh, for building real-time streaming applications, so uh, think about in a microservices environment when you need to exchange messages between uh, uh, microservices, you can use uh, Apache Kafka. So uh, uh, just to uh, dive a, a little bit into uh, use cases, uh, think about uh, 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 Kafka is used to, to collect uh, event from uh, real-world devices, Think about IoT devices, for instance, from human events, so uh, retail transactions, and also data database uh, events. As I, as I said before, uh, you can build a just-in-time data warehouse. So uh, just-in-time uh, data warehouse is, is based on uh, change data capture uh, events, basically. And it allows to uh, integrate a complex architecture so let's go to the, uh, let me see the hot stuff. Uh, what is Neo4j stream? Is a, a Neo4j plugin uh, built on top uh, three main concepts. So we have uh, uh, the first one, which is the change data capture. The second one, which is the sync. And the third one, which are, are the streams procedure. And uh, we also have the Kafka Connect plugin we will see uh, in, the, in the next few slides. So, how uh, Neo4j streams can be used? Uh, can be used to read and write, uh, and write uh, data directly from uh, Neo4j, Neo4j and uh, to Kafka. You can use uh, the change data capture in order to uh, integrate uh, Neo4j into uh, uh, your microservices uh, architecture or with uh, other databases. You can use Neo4j streams in order to exchange da data between uh, distinct uh, Neo4j installations, uh, for instance, uh, from uh, uh, different analysis. Uh, for integrate, uh, your Neo4j installation uh, within any exist existing uh, architecture via Kafka. And uh, last but not least, uh, for building a just-in-time data warehouse with Spark and Hadoop. So, the history is uh, quite recent. Uh, we, we started in uh, 2018, with, uh, in October, uh, to be more specific, uh, with uh, some experiment, and in, in December, we did uh, the first release. In January uh, uh, of uh, this year, we released also the uh, Kafka Connect plugin. We published uh, uh, an article on the Confluent blog. In April, uh, Neo4j uh, built a partnership with Confluent, and uh, uh, this month, uh, uh, the Neo4j uh, Kafka plugin uh, sync got the uh, 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 verified gold uh, standard. So, how uh, the change data capture uh, works? But uh, uh, let me do a little uh, step back. What is a uh, change data capture? In, uh, in design partner pattern is a, a, a set of, uh, uh, let me say, uh, frameworks that allow to uh, to define uh, how the data is changing in uh, your database. So, how it works? Basically, uh, in general, the Neo4j streams uh, is a, a Neo4j plugin, so uh, it uh, uh, must be installed into the Neo4j directory. 
And uh, the change data capture install a uh, transaction hook. So we expose every information about uh, creation, updates, and leads of node relationship and properties. We provide information of how the data was before the transaction and after the transaction. We provide also schema information. So uh, if a property is, uh, is uh, an integer, a string, uh, and so on. And uh, moreover, we allow to uh, uh, configure a property filtering for each topic. How uh, the property uh, filtering works. So uh, here we, are, we have the general uh, configuration. So we have the prefix, streams, dot source, dot topic, dot nodes. Then we have the topic name and the filtering configuration. So you can provide for every topic a set of configuration, so you can specify the, the label that you want to configure. If you look at the star, it's a wildcard, so this means that you can stream all the data. After the semicolon, we have an example on how to specify only the uh, include properties. So for, the no for a node that has the uh, label one, we include only prop one and prop two in our change uh, data event. Or you can also exclude uh, uh, the properties. So uh, all the properties of a node will be included, uh, except for prop one and prop two for the label three. So think about uh, for uh, maybe a JDBC uh, compliant, uh, um, sorry, uh, GDPR compliant application. You need to, to stream uh, data to uh, a different business unit, but uh, you need to hide uh, uh, some property. Uh, you can uh, easily use uh, this filtering configuration in order to do that. The second pillar is the sync. So the sync allows to uh, ingest data into Neo4j by uh, reading a Kafka, a Kafka, a Kafka topic. So uh, uh, our first idea was to build a generic consumer with a fixed projection of events into node and relationship. But then uh, we did something, uh, let me say, uh, smarter. So uh, we basically want to give to the user the power to uh, define a custom import statement for each topic. So you can basically turn uh, every Kafka events into an arbitrary graph structure. But how you can do that? So you can uh, simply provide your own uh, safer statement. So this is the configuration property. You have uh, the common prefix, so uh, stream, sync, topic, uh, cipher, then the topic name, and then you can provide your own cipher statement. For instance, uh, starting from a, a simple topic, you can uh, match two nodes and uh, create an order uh, between them, okay? Very simply. How it works under the hood? We basically, we basically collect uh, a set of uh, events, and uh, then we unwind these, event, these events, uh, and we apply the provided uh, cipher statement. So let's talk about uh, the Kafka Connect sync, but uh, uh, I need to, to explain what is Kafka Connect. is uh, an open source component of Apache Kafka that uh, allows to connect uh, Kafka to different data sources. So how works the uh, Neo4j Kafka Connect sync? Basically, it works in exactly the same way of the Neo4j Streams plugin. We have uh, a shared code base between uh, the two projects, in fact. Uh, but uh, the main difference is that the Neo4j Kafka Connect Sync plugin must be installed 
into the uh, Kafka Connect platform. So it's a plugin that uh, uh, must be installed outside Neo4j. And you can download uh, this plugin from the Confluent Hub. The third pillar is the Neo4j Streams uh, procedure. So uh, uh, the Neo4j Streams project uh, comes out with two procedures, the Streams uh, Publish procedure, which allow to publish uh, information to a topic, and the Streams Consume, which allow to consume information from a topic. But let's uh, see how we have uh, uh, the signature of the Streams uh, Publish pro procedure, which uh, takes two arguments. The first one is the topic name, and the second one, the payload that uh, uh, we want to stream. And the example is uh, uh, at the bottom of the slide. So you can publish uh, uh, the Neo4j uh, streams publish uh, procedure, uh, publish over a Kafka topic, a simple JSON as described uh, at the bottom of the slides. The signature uh, of the, uh, the streams consume procedure uh, is uh, simple as well, as well. We have uh, two, uh, two arguments. The first one is the topic that we want to consume uh, the data. And the second one, which is optional, it's a, a configuration parameter, which is a, a key value map. Uh, where you can uh, basically can specify a timeout for uh, consume uh, the data and some other parameters. And uh, you can basically uh, uh, use uh, this procedure uh, as uh, any other uh, epoch uh, procedure, for instance. Uh, and you can, uh, for instance, uh, chain the data collected from, uh, a Kaf uh, from a Kafka topic and uh, apply your uh, Cypher query over it. And, uh, for instance, here we are consuming uh, data from a topic uh, customer, and uh, we uh, merge the customer over the ID property, and uh, on create, we set uh, the name and the surname. And then uh, we will uh, return the, the list of uh, created customers. There are uh, some resources. Uh, the first one is uh, the official uh, repository. So if you have uh, some question or feature request or issue, please uh, uh, open an issue into the repository. And uh, the second link uh, is about uh, uh, a GitHub uh, repo that contains uh, a demo that I did uh, in FOSDEM uh, in February. And uh, it's uh, a Docker stack composed by uh, Zeppelin, uh, Neo4j, uh, and Kafka. So you can test uh, all the three pillars of uh, the Neo4j streams. I, uh, I finished my part, so I will uh, give uh, the, the control to... Okay, I'm gonna move it over. To you. you ready, okay. Lou? Thank you, Andrea, thank you. Thank you. Um, and viewers, feel free to ask questions. This is your opportunity to ask live. So, okay. Uh, Lou, when you're ready, here we go. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Andrea. Yes, good. So, I'm going to take on the introduction that Andrea has given to uh, the Kafka plugin with Near for j and I want to talk a bit about uh, an example of how we can use this with graph databases. And specifically, what I want to look at is how can we make graph analytics more event-driven? So there are many, many reasons why you want to get your data into a graph. Because once you've got your data into the graph, you can start to explore the, the context and the structure that you have based on how your units of information, how your nodes are related and connected to each other. So, for example, I'm looking at some of the graph algorithms that we have that you can run on near for j So maybe you want to identify influences in your graph. And you may want to do this because you want to try and figure out if someone's likely to churn, if you're a mobile company, you know, is there something you can do to, um, you know, make sure that they have good satisfaction levels. So 
um, you know, you reduce sort of like the network reach of, of that um, incident. And for example, we might use something like between the centrality as an example here. Maybe we want to try and detect communities in our data. So again, based on how the relationships link our data together, you'll start to notice potentially depending on the data, certain structures. And we want to try and figure out what those communities are. So in this example, we may use Levain to identify here distinct group of friends. Or maybe we want to understand network dependencies. So in this example here, uh, we're using, for example, PageRank in this example. We want to start to get an understanding of node importance. So which node through the various connections and interconnections and other nodes you know, have, have more importance than the others. So we may want to do this if we're looking to determine potential weak points in our network. So again, if we're looking at a telco network or we're looking at some kind of IT infrastructure, we may discover that actually there are certain components that if they go out will cause you know, a, a lot of trouble for us. So we can start to do this kind of analysis to figure out if we need to introduce some kind of replication. So, these, uh, depending on what function that you're running and what kind of graph analytics you're running, this can be quite time consuming. This can take a lot of time. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the clustering architecture of Neo4j. So this is uh, available in the Enterprise Edition. And basically what happens, typically, we will have this, this three server cluster here. And and, it's, and this is a typical setup. This is what would normally happen if people are looking to have high availability or having some kind of disaster recovery, disaster recovery coverage and that kind of thing. Just basically having some level of redundancy there. And this is typically, you know, you, you'd have some write queries or have some read queries and all is great. And if you're in a situation where the majority of your queries are relatively lightweight, so they're not particularly complicated. Um, you're not trying to do, you know, huge graph traversals. You're not looking to do very complex intersections and that kind of thing. You know, it's fantastic. It's a nice, lightweight setup, and it serves your purposes. But what happens if you've got some data scientists and they're doing these really complex data-intensive queries? You probably you might not want to run them on the cluster because you know the kind of stuff that they're looking at requires a big machine, with lots of CPU and lots of memory, and that's like an, an edge case where most of the things that you're doing day to day, your cluster handles nicely. So what you might do is you might decide to spin up a read replica, and basically what the read replica is is it copy it has a copy of the graph, so it has exactly the same data as the cluster here. But the beauty here is, in, in some sense, it's separated away from the cluster doing its day-to-day -day business of, um, sort of taking in write requests and so forth. So what you can do here is if you've got uh, the, the data-hungry data scientists looking to do this really complex, complex querying, they can have this read replica. And this, you can make a nice big machine. You can have lots of CPU, lots of memory. So you can do these really intensive graph-wide and complex querying on here, whilst your main cluster is left to do its day-to-day -day business, you know, handling your online transactions and so forth. So that's great. Now, if we're looking to do some complex uh, analytics, so let's say Minecraft example we're looking to find influence that kind of thing and Lou, okay I think the, we, we I go away volume, we find the output Lou, i think the, i think the volume just chopped out a little bit for like oh, sorry. 10 or 15 seconds so if you could just rewind 10 or 15 sure. seconds on what you were just saying so we don't miss anything of course of course Thank um you. so so we've got here we've, so we've got the cluster and this is going to do our you know various sort of online transactional type querying so for example for getting new customer registered or we're taking note of what they've purchased and so forth but if we're looking to do the more sort of heavyweight, sort of big analytics, then you know we will spin off this read replica, and this we can have you know, lots of CPU, lots of RAM, and it's going to handle these nice big queries quite nicely. But 
we're doing this and let's say we're doing some mean detection or we're doing some kind of complex calculation and that the out you know an output of that we have some result but we want to write back to the graph so let's say we've done some complex querying to determine some um, sort of on recommendation or we've got some kind of score we want to attach to our graph you know and we want to embed that information so we have this gap here of it's read replica how it's not going to write back so how do we get this information to update our graph back to main cluster and this is what we're going to use the Kafka plugin for so what we're going to do in this example, and this is a very simple example, but hopefully you start to get a flavour of how you can scale this out and the power of how you can start joining together Apache Kafka and Neo4j, is we're going to take the movie database. So this will be the movie database that you have when you start up the browser in Neo4j. So everything that you see today, you can go away and have a go at doing yourself so you start to get comfortable with working with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use PageRank to find the most connected actor in our data set. So what is this going to look like? So we've got our cluster. So we're going to load the data here. In this, in this example, this three core cluster will be dealing our, doing our day-to-day -day sort of usual database type stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a read replica, which we've spun up. And we're going to run PageRank on there, and that's going to give us PageRank scores for our actors, so we can find out which ones are the most connected. And what we're going to do is we're going to stream those results. So we're going to stream the internal node IDs and what properties we want to set to them. And this is really cool because it's super fast if you've got the internal node ID, which you have to use with great care. But with that ID, it's very, very fast to make updates on the graph. And what we're going to do with this is here, we're going to have these nodes here configured for sync. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the Kafka procedure call here to send the results to a Kafka queue, which are then going to be picked up by the sync. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to quickly show you the configuration files. So hopefully that's not too small. But you can see here, this is just to get to tell, uh, this is the configuration for the read replica here. So this is just giving it the details of um, what was Zookeeper and Kafka. And here we've got the configuration file, and this is the pretty much the same configuration for all of the servers in the cluster. So again, we give it the details for um, the, the various core information. Then this is just the identifier for uh, the cluster. And then here, effectively, we're telling it that we want to have sync enabled. And as Andrea was talking about earlier, you know, this is how we're going to consume. And when I show you the query, you'll see what's happening. But effectively, I send uh, like a mini array to a topic called Neo RR. And then here the query says with each um, event payload, it's payload, and then we're going to match the person according to their internal ID. And then we're going to set the page rank, uh, page rank property based on the second part of that array. So pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do, so we've got our cluster up and running. I'm just going to check that there hasn't been an election. No. So we're currently on the leader. So what I'm going to do is load some data. So I'm going to use the movie database, as we spoke about earlier. So I'm just going to click on this. And we're just going to load up some data running this query. And I'm just going to bring up the read replica. So, so we can see that we've got the data on the read replica here. Great. So I'm now going to run PageRank on here. Oh, I was going to run PageRank on here, but 
Unfortunately, I've lost a query. So bear with me one moment whilst I retrieve the query. While you're doing that, actually, Lee, we've got a couple of uh, questions from for Andrea from the from the earlier part of the talk. So, Andrea, maybe I, I can uh, I can ask those questions to you. Yes. Cool. So, so um, first one's from Joe Chazak. Um, so, as a stream is ingested by Neo4j, is each record handled individually in a real time manner, or do records have to be ingested into Neo4j in batches? Yeah, we collect uh, um, a set of events uh, from uh, the topic, and then we uh, we so we process a batch of events. Uh, basically, we do uh, an unwind. It's a very common uh, optimization uh, in uh, Neo4j uh, using an unwind for batching uh, the events. So, I already uh, answered to this one on. Uh, the chat, and I also linked uh, an interesting uh, article by Michael Unger uh, that talk about how to batch uh, data into Neo4j. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, cool. I can hear you. Yeah, then, if, then there's a couple of other follow ups okay. to, to that one as well. So, yeah, and I, 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 I guess, I guess we can still do it while Lee's um, finding the query. So, second one, follow up to that was. Uh, do you when you when the records are coming into Neo4j from a Kafka stream, are they in a guaranteed uh, order? The order is guaranteed by uh, Kafka, so we basically uh, uh, leverage uh, the order uh, of the uh, as they arrive in Kafka. So we we you can specify also how to read the Kafka topic. So you can uh, read it uh, from uh, the beginning, from uh, the last committed, or uh, we have a, 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 an open-ed um, uh, pull request that allows uh, that will enable uh, the Neo4j streams plugin to read from a specific offset. Okay, cool. And then the last questions from. Nam Rata Patel, uh, is there a way to act or not act the consumer message uh, if you wanted to have it be reprocessed? Mm. Oh, I think I need a little bit uh, more detail about uh, this question because. Uh, uh, Okay, we can wait until maybe he can yeah. elaborate yeah. if he's still tuned in. Um, yeah. Also, <clears throat> John Sell. It would be cool. Uh, John Sell asked if you guys are going to be touching on performance and data volumes at some oh, point. Yeah, I was answering to that oh. one. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, um, uh, we have um, uh, a lot test that uh, made for ourselves just to to set a uh, 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 basic uh, measure uh, to understand if we ch made some change uh, over the code, uh, that change uh, had uh, a, a, a bad impact uh, on the performances. But uh, uh, I don't think there is uh, an unique way to, to, to perform uh, uh, performance tests on uh, on uh, on this situation because uh, it can depend by the uh, the network uh, uh, the uh, the Neo4j cluster status the Kafka cluster status so it's it's very difficult to talk about uh, a throughput uh, a specific uh, data in uh, in uh, for uh, this okay. Yep. Cool. I think Lou is Lou is back and ready to continue. Absolutely. Sorry about that, everybody. So effectively, what we're going to do here is we're going to call the page rank algorithm here. And what we're doing here is basically trying to find out the most connected person and sort of going to return a page rank score. So we're going to execute that query. So we're going to be called the graph algorithms uh, page rank function here. For those of you who have not heard, Mark and Amy have written a fantastic graph algorithms book. So do go Google it, check it out. It's brilliant. Um, 
shameless plug there. And uh, we're going to we do, did also put we're going a link. To do We did put a link in the chat too, so you're not fantastic. the only one who shameless plugged it. Excellent, excellent. Seriously, guys, fantastic book. And what we're going to do is we're going to yield the node ID. So that's going to be an internal node ID. And we're going to. Oh, oh dear. The, demon, the uh, demo demons. And we're going to return the page rank score. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm effectively creating now this sort of two element array. So with node ID and score. I'm going to then call the streams uh, dot publish. So this is calling the Kafka streams, and I'm going to publish my two my two um, array into this topic of Neo RR, and then this is just going to return the counts. This is going to return the number of person nodes that have been involved in the page rank calculation. So I'm going to run that, and whilst that's running, if I bring up this window. Oh dear. The demo demons are after me. The demo demons. I know, I know. What's going I, on here? I feel like they chase after every single live demo. It's just always when you're doing a live demo. So, so let, let's let's see whether um, it was just the um, the console for the topic that's not connected. So, if I just bring back. Aha, uh -huh. yes, that's fine. It's all good. It, it, it runs. So if we do match the person. So where are we now, Lou? Where are we running this query? So this we're running back up. To, yeah, good point. So what we've done, we've gone back onto the main cluster. So this is the this is the leader in the cluster. So we ran the we just ran the page rank query on the read replica. So I've now so this so here this is the read replica here. So this is I'm now switched back to the main cluster, and I'm now going to run a query to pull back all of the person nodes, and I'm going to return their name. I'm going to return their page rank score, and I'm going to order that by. So I'm going to order the most connected people first. So if you run this, there we go. Fantastic. So effectively, what we've done is we've we loaded some data onto the main cluster, and then what happens is the read replica always has uh, a copy of the, the, the data that's on the cluster. We went to the read replica, we ran our page rank algorithm. Yeah, you know, that, that's quite an, yeah, this is very tiny data set, but if you've got quite a large data set, that's quite an intensive query. So what it's done, it's going away, it runs that query, and as results are becoming available, it's streaming those results, and it's doing that by calling the, calling the, Kafka procedure that we have, and it streams the results to the topic that we created. And we've got the sync on the main cluster to pick up uh, messages from that topic and then do something with them. In this case, what it's doing is it's finding the, the uh, nodes based on their internal ID and then setting the property of page rank. So quite a simple example, but I'm hoping this starts to provide the power of what we can do with this. So, cool. Uh, yeah, and I guess if you, if you wanted to, you could, since that data is on the stream, you could then do anything else that you wanted with those results. Absolutely. So, no, absolutely. So, just as an example, if you think about what, you know, how or why might you be doing this and why might you be using this? So let's say, for example, you've got lots of different data sources or things coming in. So let's say you've got some kind of dynamic recommendation system. And yeah, you know, so let's say, for example, this is for financial instruments, as an example. So you've got various companies and things that you're looking to um, maybe buy and sell shares, buy or sell shares in and so forth. And maybe you want to start thinking about information coming in with regards to what's coming from the news. So maybe you've got some kind of sentiment sentiment analysis going on maybe you've got some kind of analysis based on volumes maybe you're having a look at how different um, different companies are connected so you know the, the behaviors of uh, similar companies in a group and you know if if one has poor results you know does that mean that the their competitors are going to have better results and so forth so you've got a lot of this sort of dynamic stuff going on and it could well be that you've got read replicas spun up doing all of this sort of quite complex 
uh, querying and analysis and it's going away to figure out you know how these things are connected and it's going to spit out you know effectively it's going to spit out a value saying you know that this is more you know more higher recommended than something else and you want to get that information as quickly as possible over to your main cluster because your main cluster is the, the you know the your the core of your system that users are going to be connected to that are going to be querying against so effectively you've got this stream and you can continuously be updating the information in your main cluster in this way whilst offloading that concern of doing this deep expensive analytics onto the read replicas so it's a very powerful way you can start to see how these things start get start getting brought together and how they fit in and being able to bring the streaming capability so extremely powerful okay so yeah so i guess uh, just to, to quickly summarize what we've covered today um so Andrea gave a fantastic introduction to Apache Kafka and the overview of Neo4j streams and how you use them and configure them and so forth. And we've given you uh, an example, very high level, but you know, powerful example of how you can fit these components together to give you this event driven graph analytics. Uh -oh. um, somebody, I never received. Yeah, somebody actually just asked, um, his, his name is Vardan from Moose from USA, uh, since your count on, <laughs> I was like, is that the last name from Musa? Um, and maybe it is, I don't know, Vardan from Musa. Uh, since your count on replica side for page rank was 133, that means this setup streamed 133 records, nodes and page rank back to the main system, right? So what it streams specifically, unfortunately, it's not, Unfortunately, it, it didn't show in here because it would have been fantastic to show what happened in the queue. Maybe I can. Let me try and rerun that. So, what we're, what we're effectively what we're, what we're trying to do is uh, just send back the internal ID because we don't want to send back the whole node because that's a lot of information. And all we actually need is the all we, all we actually need is just internal ID. So here we go. So this is the so this is the data here. I appreciate it's a little bit on the slow a bit on the small side. But what you can see here, this is what we're sending back. So this here, this is the this is the internal node ID. So what you'll find when you uh, do when you look at the nodes and relationships in Neo 4 J, each individual one has this internal ID, which um, effectively be wary of these because they do get recycled by the database but each node and relationship has this unique internal id and this is here so what i can do is if i go off and do a query and say match p person or match p doesn't i don't have to give a label where you know i did you know where p dot you know, id pid equals this it's going to bring me back that node. So that's all I need. So that is that is my unique reference to that node. And then this is the page rank score for that node. So I'm not sending back the entire node. I'm just sending back the internal reference to that node, if that makes sense. So that's a super efficient way of being able to uh, to identify that node and then set it that property. Great. Cool. Then we have a question from Bert, which I guess I can answer, but I'll, but I'll, I'll just. I was going to say, Mark is the co-author for the Graph Algorithms O'Reilly book, so. So the question is, is uh, do the graph algorithms always work on the whole graph, or can they work only on new data? So uh, they don't have to run on the whole graph. You can run them on what we call a graph projection. So you can kind of say, hey, I want to run it on um, either. Uh, a it's either we normally define a specification, so the specification could be, hey, I want to run it on this node label uh, and this uh, relationship type, or you can say, hey, here's a cipher query that defines the subgraph that I'd like to run it on. Um, that doesn't, I guess you would have to have, figure out how to write a query that runs it only on new data, but typically, uh, as Lou described already, most of the, or the, the algorithms that you would run generally are, are running across everything, like running it only on new data, might not necessarily give you uh, much insight because you'd still want to take into account the rest of the structure that you've got there. But yes, you can. You don't have to run it on the whole graph. You can uh, narrow it down. 
Uh, and then we've, I think Andrea has been replying to some questions about uh, a dead letter queue. So if, if you're trying to process messages off a Kafka queue or Kafka topic and there's a problem, uh, we're working on a, a functionality. Sorry, um, I was talking to on answering uh, to some question. Uh, can you, I can't hear you. Uh, you can't hear us? Yeah, you yes, but uh, not Mark. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I was just oh, okay. summarizing your, your replies. Okay. Uh, okay. Are there any other questions there, Mark? That you think uh, that we should have for? Uh, there are some, but I guess they're going like quite specifically into one um, error case. So perhaps it's, it's easier to. For, for Andrea to reply to those on the community's site because mm -hmm. um, it tends to be the answer gives us another question. Um, yeah. It's probably easier to do it like that. Uh, I, will, I will link the community site um, post again so people will be able to ask any of the questions that they might have to directly to the presenters, um, the people working on the, this project. So. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions, or is that? Yeah, I think we're mostly yeah. done. So yeah, if you, uh, I think uh, Corinne's already shamelessly plugged this. But for people to find this video on YouTube, you need to you need to like it. So if you enjoyed the talk, don't forget to to do that. Uh, and I guess again, so thanks to everybody for coming, and thanks to Andrea and and, and Lou for showing us uh, showing us what they've been working on. And also, people should download the Graph Algorithms book because it's offered for free for not forever. <laughs> So you should do it now. And it's awesome. It, you, have you read the whole book? I'm sure. Yeah. Um, we have some people in there who are still reading through it in the chat. Um, you should definitely download the book. And if any of you guys are interested in the future to present your project on the online meetup, um, you can actually post about your project in uh, on the community site under the content category. If you have like a blog post or something that describes what it is, or you could just post about it in the projects category where you can just write about what your project is with like a link to the project or something like that. Um, Cause we're always looking for <clears throat> cool, interesting talks. Um, so we've got two next week to we make up for the one that, to make up for the one that we lost last week. <laughs> That's true. Um, so we have, what are the two that we have next week? We have Bia. We've got, doing... the, we've got Bea talking about the football that we lost last Thursday. So that's next Friday at this time. And then we've got uh, one on uh, by Stefan talking about using the FJ for provenance data. Oh yeah, that's right. That's going to be a good one too. Yeah, so um, fun, uh, fun end of week next week. Yeah. So hopefully you guys can join us next week. And uh, thank you, Andrea and Lou. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Bye. See you later, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.